We're going to look at one of the most important touching points that there is in the human endeavor, which is the relationship between imagination and creativity and the real world that we touch. So uncovering reality is all about looking at whether science really does describe reality or how much of it's in our heads. Um, my brief says that physics depends on the correspondence between mathematical laws and the world. But the question we want to address here is, does it? Are the models that we use powerful tools, or do they actually exist out there in nature? And how much of our description of the universe actually enables us to understand what's really there? Firstly, let me just make a confession. Um, physics and physicists are pretty limited in the kinds of things we can describe, or at least describe usefully. You know, when, when things get too complicated, we, we just, we kind of get a bit scared, we, we can't solve the equations, we don't really know what, what to do. You know, anything on the level of human interactions or problems in society, I mean, anything that's just, just hard, we're not good at, at solving. Okay. Um, what we're good at is when we can find situations where you, you can sweep away those complications and you can focus in on uh, you know, the essence of something, so tr try to isolate something. And that's where we can really make progress. Um, so there's sort of a, a two-pronged attack we have on, on understanding the world. Um, the first, I guess, is what you would call fundamental physics. So it's where um, you just look at smaller and smaller distance scales and try to understand what everything's made of and then what that stuff does. That's sort of the, the, the first approach. And I think on this level, physics has just been spectacularly successful. You know, th this is the story of you know, atoms in the periodic table or in uh, the more modern perspective, particle physics and what's called the standard model. It's our best theory for everything that we have. And um, you know, th th these theories are just, just amazing. We have the standard model, we've had it for 30 years, it's survived everything we've thrown at it, it uh, predicts correctly every single experiment that we've been able to do, uh, and very often with an accuracy that's just unprecedented in any other field of human endeavor. You know, to, to, to nine decimal places, nine digits after the decimal point, we'll do the calculations and it'll just, just be right. So, you know, th this is just very, very impressive. Okay, so that, that's the first approach of, of physics. The second approach, um, is actually what most physicists do most of the time, um, which is try to work, work backwards. So try to start with those building blocks that, that we've discovered, typically atoms and electrons, um, and then try to work sort of up in the hierarchy um, to understand you know, all the things that we missed in our rush to get to, to the very bottom. Um, so here I, th I think it's a little more of a, a mixed bag. You know, it, it, it's hard to do that. Um, in particular, because what happens is, is you find that um, you know, when you take billions of particles and you put them together, they exhibit phenomena that you don't see for a single particle. They exhibit what's called emergent phenomena. You get collective behavior with all of these particles cooperating together to give rise to new building blocks on the next level that you probably wouldn't have thought of. They're certainly not obvious by looking at the, the fundamental laws of physics. So here, as, as I said, you know, th things are you know, a little more rocky. Um, there's some areas of science that I, I think we've just nailed. You know, chemistry. Chemistry can basically be understood in terms of, of, of physics and, and understood at a, a quantitative level. Um, material science is what's called condensed matter physics, but understanding you know, wh why the wood looks like it does, why the light shines off the glass but not off the wood, th things like this, why, why metals conduct electricity. And that, again, just we've nailed it. But then as things start to get messier, as you, as you get to molecular biology, we start to struggle. As we get to cellular biology, we're, we're really in trouble. Um, you know, as, you, as you move up, as you get to physiology or human psychology or social sciences, you know, we, we're really way out of our depth here. Um, so that, that's sort of my global vision of physics. Um, it's limited in what it can say about the world, but when it's good, it's just really, really good. When you're in the realm where physics is effective, um, I just think there's no other game in town. You know, th this, is, this is far and away the best thing that we have to describe reality at those levels. I understood that this is, uh, we have to describe reality. And this was really the reason why I'm, kind of, why, why I'm a scientist. Because the whole idea of being a scientist, if I understand what's going on, 
This is uh, well, what I get out of my work. This is my purpose. And, and I, if I go to deep down and see quarks and see standard model, I see we have, uh, as we said, it's beautifully correct. When I go to language of mathematics, it's very elegant, it's very simple. But my way, main work is foundations of quantum mechanics. It's when I start to use these basic laws of physics, which work perfectly for very small systems, and try to go up. Now, there are this chemistry, biology, whatever, when we can use physics and try to explain things, and things are messy, and I don't know exactly what's going on. But I tend to believe that it will work fine. What I'm looking for, being in foundations, and this, there is such an area as foundations of, of quantum mechanics, foundations of physics today, is the places where there are paradoxes. Sometimes you take these basic simple laws, you apply them, and you can apply them to a system which you can really see, and you get to a paradoxes. This is a situation when, which I consider. Like you mentioned this interaction-free measurement, I'm trying to find an object without touching it. It's contradict our uh, common sense. In my work, uh, I'm looking for paradoxes, but not uh, to find that the, uh, nature is strange. I'm looking to paradoxes to solve them, because my final idea to get the complete simple explanation. And I believe that there is one. I have to admit that the position which I have about reality, it's not what we usually see around. I believe that the reality is, is not kind of strong object as we see here. The reality, everything is wave. This is the only way where I can have a theory which I can understand everything. Everything is just wave. Wave which have interference, and moreover, it's a quantum wave. Quantum wave have not more just interference, it has entanglement. Like different particles can be entangled and interfere only when they are together. I have to pay a price, which I mentioned in the two hours ago when I talked about causality. Because explain reality, explain causality. To get a correct explanation of this picture, I have to admit that what I see here, it's not the only thing which there is there. There should be some many parallel worlds in which maybe I'm not here and you didn't come to this Hay Festival. Now, it's not, ever, it's not that everything exists. Sometimes I can make things to split. In my home page, I have a word splitter. You can take my name, look on the internet, go to word splitter, and make a split, split of word to any, and from two to six. And then you decide where you go every time. And you will be sure that some of, some of copy of you will go to all these places. I believe in all these strange things because I want to have a simple explanation of everything which I see. And I believe that today's physics has a very good explanation. All what we see around, we understand. There are people like you working in string theory and other things. These are things which you cannot really measure now. We also want to understand the beginning of the universe and the end. I believe that there will be no more evolutions when you'll finish your job. I believe that now, roughly, we understand everything which is around. On the one hand, I'm in the lion's den here with, uh, with two realist scientists, but in some ways, I don't differ in terms of what I would be wanting to do from what Lev just said. I would be wanting to describe how the world is and say as much about what is going on as we can. And that's what I understood philosophy to be attempting to do. So we start from some common ground. However, <coughs> Scientific theories, like all of our accounts of the world, are created by the mind. And 
That, I guess, we can all agree. But I don't think that they describe the world itself. I think they are ways that we use to make sense of the world and to intervene, and they're enormously powerful and successful. But I don't think that in some sense they say how it is. For more debates, talks and interviews, subscribe today to the Institute of Art and Ideas at IAI TV.